Hello everyone and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ and we're going to be taking you guys through and walk through on how to set up your ASUS RT AC3200 wireless router. Okay, we've gone ahead and finished unboxing our AC3200 router. So as you can see, we have the router, we have six antenna, then we have one AC adapter, and then we have the ethernet cable uh, that will be used to attach the router to your modem, whether it's a DSL or a cable modem or a fiber modem. Um, so the first step that we're gonna need to go ahead and do in terms of getting this unit set up is going to be taking our antennas and actually getting them affixed to the router itself. So it's a very simple process, as you can see right here, that's going to be an open face connection. Here, there's a thread, and all we're gonna do is go ahead and screw it on until it is finger tight, no need to over torque it. And then from there, you're gonna rotate and then lift the antenna into position. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that up with the other five antennas, and from there, we'll keep moving this setup along. Okay, so we've gone ahead and finished affixing our six antennas, and we've gone ahead and positioned them all vertically, so we're good to go. Now from here, if you take a look here at the back of the router, you're gonna see a number of different connections. These are gonna be the ones that we're gonna to need to be dealing with when first setting up the AC3200. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these connections on the back of the router. So taking a look here at the back of the router, you can see that we have the AC adapter connection. So this is going to be for our power. So this is our AC adapter. Uh, all we're going to need to do is go ahead and affix it there. And then directly next to it is the power button. So we're gonna go ahead and depress that once you've gone ahead and plugged in your AC adapter. Now directly next to that, you will see four gigabit ethernet ports. These are hardline connections that you would go ahead and utilize for any hardline based device, whether it would be a television, a receiver, a notebook, a desktop, a console, any sentient device that you would wanna go ahead and have a hardline connection for. Now here, this is going to be what's referred to as your WAN or your internet source. So this will be where you're gonna go ahead and connect the cable coming from your modem. Uh, so there will be generally a ethernet cable that will look fairly similar to this in terms of its overall look. And that will go from your modem, whether it's a cable, fiber, or DSL modem, to this connection. And then lastly, here we have a USB. Now, this is going to be an optional uh, port in terms of you utilizing it for USB attached storage devices uh, or printers or other types of USB based devices that are compatible with the AC3200. At this time though, it's not required to go ahead and get us up and running. So let's go ahead and power this unit on and to go ahead and proceed to show you how easy it is to set up the AC3200. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and completed the physical setup, so we've got all the connections coming from our modem uh, to the AC3200, we're going to quickly talk to you about what the setup options are for connecting your actual AC3200 to the internet and essentially getting yourself up and running. Now, one of the really great things that we have with this router is the software that's built inside of it, or what's referred to as the firmware. This firmware has actually been purpose designed for a simple and easy setup that doesn't actually require any type of software or even applications. Now, as you can see right here, I've got everything from my very nice tablet to a ultrabook, so a notebook, as well as a desktop. And on all of these devices, whether you're gonna be utilizing a physical hardline connection that's connected to the system, such as what we might have with a desktop or what we might have with a notebook, we can equally and as easily set up the system purely from a wireless-based connection. So once again, whether you have a wireless desktop, notebook, your smartphone, or your tablet, all we need to do is connect to the wireless signal that's being broadcast by the router when it's first powered on to be able to go ahead and access its web setup interface. That means no applications are required it will directly bring up a web page just like if you were browsing your favorite website so that you can go ahead and easily and effectively set this up. So let's go ahead and show you how that looks. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and quickly set up my tablet right here. It's on my handy dandy pop scope. So this is great to allow me to go ahead and stabilize my tablet here so I can show you guys pretty much how to set this up. So first and foremost, all we're gonna need to do is uh, Go ahead and uh, access our wireless setup. Now, this is an Android-based device, so most of you guys, you wanna go ahead and leverage the, essentially the settings page to make sure that you've got your Wi-Fi enabled. So I have Wi-Fi enabled. If you had an iOS device or a Windows-based device, all of them are entirely uh, completely compatible as this is purely web-based, so it does not require any applications. So once we have our Wi-Fi enabled, the next step is going to be that we actually need to connect to a wireless network. So just like you were gonna be connecting to a friend's network or a coffee shop or a different wireless this environment, what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually connect to that network. So I'm gonna head over to my Wi-Fi settings and tap down the Wi-Fi button. 
Now from there, you're going to see it says ASUS WPS available. So this is a wireless network that's actually being broadcast by our router. So all we need to do is go ahead and click on it. And as you'll see that there's no security because this is the initial setup signal that's being broadcast. So I'm gonna go ahead and click connect. And once it goes ahead and connects to that wireless network, the next step is going to be to go ahead and open up your preferred web browser that you have on your mobile device. Okay guys, so it's gone ahead and opened up our web browser. As you can see, it's gone ahead and started the overall initial setup. So we're just gonna go ahead and press the go button. This would be exactly the same if you've gone ahead and utilized the hardline connection for let's say a notebook or a desktop or essentially any device that has a built-in web browser. So at the top here, you're gonna see the option to enter in the router login name as well as password and then an option to repeat the password. Now I strongly do not recommend that you use the default admin as your uh, router login. Um, I would recommend you come up with any name whatsoever uh, as long as it's pretty much unique. And then for the password, I'd strongly recommend for you to not find your own password but actually use something like LastPass Password Generator to be able to create a safe and secure your password. So for our purposes, we're just going to actually utilize admin as the password. It actually will advise to us that this is not a safe password, um, but we're just going to do this for the purposes. Now you can actually see right there that we do actually have a built-in mechanism to monitor the strength of the password to some degree so that if you don't want to use uh, something like LastPass password generator, you can go ahead and have at least some degree of monitoring to let you know how secure your password may be. And you can actually see if that I was to add some numbers to it. Um, things along those lines, maybe an exclamation point, you can see right there that it actually shows that we've got a stronger password. So there is some integration for your safety, but I strongly do recommend that you consider using a more advanced and random based password uh, uh, from something like LastPass Password Generator. So we're just gonna go ahead and enter that in again. I'm just gonna go ahead and do admin twice, and I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom right here and hit next. Um, so. Once I've gone ahead and done that, it's gonna alert, it tells me, are you sure you wanna do that because it's not a very safe password? I say yes, and now what it's gonna to try to do is pretty much authenticate your internet connection. So as we can see right there, it authenticated the internet connection that was being sent uh, from our internet service provider through our modem, whether it's a DSL cable or fiber modem. So at this point, one of the great features that this AC3200 has is a single SSID. That means you do not have to worry about connecting to 2.4 or five gigahertz. If you don't know what that is, you don't have to worry about it. There will be one single uh, wireless network that will be named and all your devices will be automatically configured uh, for the best overall range and quality of service and overall throughput. Uh, so all we're gonna need to do is click next and we're gonna need to create the name. I generally recommend that you name the network, the name of the router so that you easily know uh, what you're actually connecting to. So we're gonna call this the AC. 3200 as far as my network name and then for the network key uh, once again you want to go ahead and use something that's fairly complex something you're going to want to remember uh, an easy thing that i recommend is if you want to use uh, let's say like a name uh, consider adding in a exclamation part exclamation point or uh, an at symbol at the beginning at the end this at least adds some complexity that usually elevates your uh, password quite a bit but of course randomly generated passwords are also great options um, for our just purposes we're going to go with a simple one so we're going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine i definitely would not recommend utilizing this type of password once again use something uh, that has been randomly generated or at, at a minimum if it's something you remember at least add two special characters at the beginning and at the end if you want to try to complicate it a bit uh, so from there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and it will let you know uh, that it's gonna go ahead and interrupt the, essentially the connection. Now at this point, uh, you may uh, be knocked off from the connection and you will need to go ahead and reconnect back to uh, the wireless signal and it will ask you to put in the actual password uh, that we have gone ahead and defined for our wireless network so that we can go ahead and complete the setup. But pretty much at this point, we're just about finished. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and reconnect to our RLS network and then finish up the setup. Okay, so we just went ahead and actually refreshed and as you can see right here, if I wanna go ahead and type in uh, a web address, I'll just go ahead and let's say MSN, you can see that we've gone ahead and uh, we've gone online and we're good to go. So at this point, uh, you could go ahead and enter into our advanced web interface if you wanted to go ahead and do more in terms of taking advantage of a lot of the robust features. So we'll quickly show you what some of those features are inside of our ASUS WRT firmware. But at this point, if all you were looking for was to be able to get online, you are now good to go. And all you would need to do is either connect your physical uh, ethernet enabled devices to the router or go ahead and enter in the SSID 
with the password that you define for any wireless enabled devices to get yourself up and running. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and pretty much gotten you all connected to the internet, some of you guys may be looking to take additional advantage of some of the more advanced functions of the AC3200. It offers quite a bit of extensive functionality, not only within the firmware, but within supplemental functionality that's offered through our AI Cloud software uh, that can be enabled on any smartphone or mobile device via an easy to download app not only for Android, but iOS-based devices, as well as additional functionality you can directly manage inside the firmware. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the ASUS WRT firmware to give you guys a little bit of perspective at some of the options that are available to you on the AC3200 inside the firmware. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay, so now to be able to access our AC3200, we've got pretty much two options inside the Windows desktop. Now, if you're utilizing a different operating system, such as Linux or OS X, you can also do this uh, through any enabled web browser. So all you need to do is go ahead and type in 192.168.1.1. And that will go ahead and prompt me with the administrator login. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type in our administrator login, which was as we defined in our setup portion, admin, admin. But keep in mind, this would be whatever credentials you went ahead and utilized. Now, if you want to go ahead and access it through a different option, utilizing a Windows operating system, you could do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and log out here quickly. And I'm going to head over to uh, the Windows Charm. Now, if I go over to Windows Charm and Windows 8, I would go ahead and type in the word network. Now this would actually pretty much be the same option as well as if you're using Windows 7 and you use the search option and you would bring up the network neighborhood. So if you bring up network, you'll see that one of the devices you see under your actual detected network devices is going to be the router. You can right click on that and go to view device web page and that will automatically open up the page for you as well. So we'll go ahead and log in with our credentials. Okay, so here you can see we're in the ASUS WRT firmware, and right off the bat, when we click on the network map, you can see that you've got a lot of reference information for you. You can confirm that one, you're connected to the internet without any issues, as well as all the specific information such as uh, your DNS, your subnet mask, all this stuff might be required in some uh, forms of troubleshooting should you need it. Uh, from right here, you can confirm all your security information such as your uh, passkey and uh, also you can confirm on the status of your router in terms of the performance, should you want to see that, as such as CPU utilization and memory utilization. You can click on clients and see how many devices you have connected and it allows you to break that down not only from wired, but wireless based devices. And those will show up right here in a tab that you can go ahead and select, which is broken down by band, both for wired, 2.4 and for 5 gigahertz. And if we had any USB enabled devices connected, we would see those associated there. Now some of the best options that this router has to offer are gonna be through these quick and easy to access interface uh, panels right here. So one would be guest network. This will allow you to easily go ahead and open up guest networks that don't have access to your primary wireless network. So this is great for visitors, friends or family that might just be coming over and need to be able to get online easily and effectively. You can go ahead and do that just by quickly enabling one of these and configuring the basic information such as the network name and the password information. Uh, AI protection is a great option for users that are looking to be able to safeguard their network easily without the advanced knowledge you might have as a network administrator. All you're going to need to do is click on the network protection button and there's a security assessment where you can go ahead and click scan. It will check many of the aspects of your router and if there's aspects of vulnerability and help you to secure them by just the click of a button. Uh, in addition to that, you can also have more advanced functionality for parents that want to be able to go ahead and limit websites as well as be able to do time scheduling. Users that are looking to be able to go ahead and make maintain the best quality of service and the best experience for different types of applications, whether it's going to be for gaming, for streaming, for downloading, for peer-to-peer -peer transferring, or any a number of other network-centric features that the router supports are going to want to be able to take advantage of QoS. So this is a quality of service option where we all we need to do is enable this function. Once we've gone ahead and enabled this function, all our different network devices will become available to us as they are connected to the system. And we can easily go ahead and define them with a level of priority to make sure that connected device is always getting the best experience possible. This will also intelligently monitor the different types of content that is coming through to make sure to balance them to make sure that you're getting the best experience possible. Now for more advanced users that may want to define their own advanced QoS uh, options, they can go in and enable that uh, more specifically through different types of options that are definable either through an adaptive type or traditional type. Now, 
Another really great feature uh, for users is going to be our traffic analyzer. Once the QoS function is enabled, it will allow you to see a real-time breakdown of how traffic is utilized on your uh, network. And the great thing about this is you can go ahead and see this per each one of the clients, where if you want to be able to see how much maybe one of the people in your network are utilizing in terms of their internet traffic and where it's going, you can see the breakdown based not only on applications specific to the system, but also specific with applications, where as you can see right here, YouTube, Google Drive are specific to different systems that have been connected. So this is a great way that you can go ahead and monitor the amount of uh, network that is being utilized. And you can break that down by not only the number of clients and applications uh, that are connected, but also with different metrics such as daily, weekly, or monthly. But keep in mind that to be able to access the traffic analyzer function, you do need to enable the quality of service. Now lastly, we have some really great options uh, in terms of USB functionality, far more than we're going to cover here in this quick setup. If you're interested, definitely make sure to check out some of the other videos that we'll be releasing to give you more insight on how you can quickly and easily share USB attached storage across your network, uh, which can also leverage our AI cloud technology, which allow you to stream, sync, or share pictures, movies, are documents not only in your internal network but also even outside your network on your wirelessly enabled devices. So that gives you a quick breakdown on just some of the options that we offer on the ASUS WRT firmware and that are part of the AC3200. One last option that's actually very special and that's exclusive here on the AC3800, even compared to other routers in the marketplace that currently offer a similar type of single SSI broadcasting uh, that the AC3200 offers, is our Smart Connect technology. Now, the AC3200 has the ability to allow all your devices to seamlessly connect to a single SSID and automatically be mapped across 2.4 5 gigahertz or a secondary 5 gigahertz channel for optimal bandwidth, throughput, range, and performance. Now, the great thing that we allow within the AC WRT firmware interface is that if you head over to the network tools and you head over to the Smart Connect rule tab, we have gone ahead and integrated an advanced option that allow you to go ahead and customize this, giving you the flexibility to define how and when the devices actually shift from one channel to the other. This is a really extensive level of control and granularity, offering you the most capability at really being able to define your network and how it automatically configures to the wide range of devices that you may be utilizing. Now, for the majority of users, you're gonna to wanna to utilize our integrated, simplified, automatic rules, uh, which can easily be enabled by the click of a button when you first set up the router and you choose our Smart Connect rules. But for users that are looking for the most level of granularity and control at defining their wireless network, this is just another option that's offered within the ASUS WRT firmware. So wrapping things up, we've given you guys a quick overview on how to correctly set up your AC3200 and be able to get connected to the internet. As you can see, it's very simple regardless of the different device that you utilize, whether it's a smartphone, tablet, desktop, or notebook, or actually any device that has a web-enabled browser. No need of even applications are required. All you need to do is be able to connect to the wireless network or physically connect a cable to an Ethernet-enabled system, and you are good to go. And within a couple of minutes, you're going to be online and connected to the internet with a great degree a functionality and feature set that's also offered by the rich firmware as well as by the advanced design giving you outstanding range throughput and overall quality service when it comes to your router now hopefully this has been uh, useful for you guys if you have any questions comments concerns or feedback feel free to drop them here on the YouTube channel as well as uh, drop us a line over at PCDIY at ASUS.com if you're interested in finding more information about ASUS networking products and other content that you might be looking to fine-tune uh, when it comes to your ASUS networking hardware as always don't forget to subscribe and take care and take it easy.